So I'd like to now pivot a little bit now to the early 80s. You played your final test match for West Indies in 1980. And in 82 or 83, I think it was, they had the Rebel Tour to South Africa. And um, you were one of the gentlemen who went down there along with people like Colin Croft and Richard Austin and some others. A lot of marquee West Indies players turned it down, like Viv Richards and others. Um, take me back to that time. You knew that a lot of the top players turned it down because of the apartheid system. Why did you still go? I don't know about that. I don't know that turned it down because of that. I know a few turned it down because of that. And as um, I know for a fact that uh, a number of others who turned it down was afraid. Afraid? Afraid. Mm -hmm. Not because they're afraid of the backlash. They're afraid of what? They didn't have the guts to go through with it. Mm -hmm. So you don't but think they were not, but they did not do it because of the apartheid yes. policy itself. Yes. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of them who said they, 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 they turned it down because it was immoral and different things. You don't think so? A lot of them. I know that for a fact that quite a few of them didn't turn it down because of that. Mm -hmm. I know, I, 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 one would say that in Viv's case, I would tend to think that Viv was always a guy like that. I, I, would, I believe Viv probably turned it down. Because of those reasons, he said. Yes. But it also didn't make sense for him at the time. Yes. To go. Mm -hmm. He was in a position now when he was positioned to captain the West Indies cricket team. Mm -hmm. To be made captain of the West Indies. He was the top player in the world. Yes. You know, everything was there for him. Mm -hmm. From the financial aspect of it. From the moral aspect of it. Yes. Everything was there for Viv. Mm -hmm. Not to accept this offer. Well, let me put myself in your place yeah. for a little bit and you tell me if I'm correct. It's 1982-1983. You played your last test match for West Indies in 1980. You're probably at that time not sure if you're ever going to play for West Indies again. Right? Sure enough. Um, you're getting a little older. Yeah. So, this opportunity comes about. You take it, right? I, it was, um, funny enough, I, I, I always wanted to go to South Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. Long before this, mm -hmm. I've always, long before all of this approval came, I was always saying, I'd love to go to South Africa mm -hmm. to see what it was like. Mm -hmm. That was always my belief. Right. And another thing that I always believed was that I believe our leaders were, were, were brainwashing to not letting um, players, whether it's music, cricket or whatever sporting activities we have, mm -hmm. not to go to South Africa. Yes. I have to say, I ask myself the question, I'm talking to myself, mm -hmm. and I ask myself the question, why would a South African leader don't want a black man of any kind of status come to South Africa? Mm -hmm. Whether cricket, football, mm -hmm. whatever. Yes. They didn't want you there. Mm -hmm. I have to say that question, why? Mm -hmm. And then it was, the, 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 that thing came back out wherein to our leaders, wherein if you dare to go there, you are severely punished. Mm -hmm. You are blacklisted. You are called sellout. Yes. But history has shown us that that is not true. Yes. That most times mm -hmm. somebody has to do it to break the barrier. Yes. And if you go through history in this country, and you go through history in the West Indies, you will always see it where somebody make the sacrifice to get it done. When you were given that opportunity, how much would you say that money played a factor in your decision? Money played a factor in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, like some of the critics, they believe money was all. At the time when I went there, I was living a fairly comfortable life. Mm -hmm. Back in Jamaica, I was, I was okay. Yes. I was one of the guys who wasn't too badly off right. at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think what I had at the time could have carried me to today. Yes. But I wasn't badly off at the time. Mm -hmm. And when the offer came to me at first, I, um, I declined. I said, no, 
you know, I, I, I wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. But when the package was put together, and funny enough, I stepped back a little bit to Pierce. Malcolm Marshall's name was on the list. This man's name was on the list. That I saw first, that came to me first. Yes. These guys had agreed to go. Mm -hmm. So how after the West Indies board got to them, they changed their mind and everything. They were no morally, they were on moral grounds. Right. <laughs> you, think, you think somebody somebody convinced them not of to go? Of course they were convinced not to go. They were also paid because that was the first time people, um, the West Indies board started to give players retainer. You were now starting to play as now was going to start to be retained because of the South Africa mm -hmm. situation. So that's what I'm saying to you, I know for a fact that some people who come out afterwards mm -hmm. and they're saying they did it because of the moral part of it. I know for a fact it wasn't so. Right, right. Yes, and I know for a fact. Exactly. Um, you did a lot of things um, when you were there as far as teaching the game to a lot of... You went to Soweto, you said... Yeah, I went to the Soweto. You, you, you taught, you had clinics, you had cricket clinics right, and different clinics, things right. like that. So yeah. it wasn't just about going down there playing and, and collecting a paycheck. No, but, and a lot of people don't know that. But, but, but let's look at it. Nobody gave us credit for this. Here, 18 West Indians. I'm going to say 18 West Indians, no meaning management and everything. Mm -hmm. We went there, we were self-managed. We didn't have any West Indies board. We were paid fairly well mm -hmm. at the time. Now, if it was all about the money, we would have gone down there, collected the money, get beat, and come back. That was the easy way out. Yes. But we realized that we had to make an impact through the sport. Mm -hmm. So our aim was to work hard. This was like an official West Indies team. We were managed, self-managed as I say. We set up everything that we used to do when we played for the West Indies. We had curfews, we set up everything because we knew as a bunch of guys that it was extremely important for us to win. Winning was the ultimate thing for us. Yes. To date, we are the only West Indies team that has been in South Africa in South Africa. Mm -hmm. The only team. Yes. During that time, we were the only rebel team that beat South Africa there. Yes. We were the only team. Mm -hmm. And the West Indies didn't see it as being proud. Mm -hmm. They, for the 30 years, mm -hmm. they destroy us with all the names. Mm -hmm. We are sellout. We are this, we are that. But the same thing happened to a lot of sportsmen. People like Jackie Robinson. Here. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali went through his, his piece. Yes. Jack Johns from the early days. Mm -hmm. And you have um, um, the runner, mm -hmm. the, the, the runner that went to Helsinki, um, that went to um, Germany. Germany. Jesse, yeah. Jesse, Jesse Owens. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, and, I, and we can continue to go in. Yes. In, in, in basketball, you have a lot of guys in basketball who break the barrier, the barrier down. True. They had to go on to the white side to play the blacks. Mm -hmm. Destroy them and say, no, you shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But over here, you see what, where we are today? And it's the same thing with South Africa. Today, look where we are today. West Indies team is playing against South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa is playing with a lot of black men on the team. Yes, yes. I wanted to ask you one, uh, one little thing about South Africa. In the documentary Fire in Babylon, uh, which I'm sure you've seen, yeah. there was a segment where Viv Richards said that when they made him an offer to play in South Africa, they told him he would be an honorary white man while he's down there. Did they tell you that too? I don't, I don't know anything about that. There's no honor a white man business for me. I, I, let me explain to you. I believe it was a special situation and we should be proud of it. It was the first time the South African government and South African Union was making special arrangements for a West Indies team to come here. Mm -hmm. We were treated like royals when we went to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Entering South Africa was treated like royals. Yes. Royalty. And that is something to be proud of at that time. Wherein here is 18 black guys going into South Africa. Wherein before they refused our entry. Yes. Mm -hmm. They refused 
Jews are attached entry into South Africa more than once. Yes. And here's 18 black guys mm -hmm. being royally treated. Mm -hmm. Brought in South Africa royally. Mm -hmm. It was an achievement on its own. Yes. Do you, when you went back home to Jamaica, you did get some backlash? Uh, funny enough, when our, one of our greatest pollsters in Jamaica, Carl Stone, mm -hmm. did the poll when we went to South Africa. 68% of the Jamaican people back to us. Yes. 68, that is almost 7 out of 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. Back to us with it. Mm -hmm. The people who were against us was the elite, the politicians and the elite. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not the regular man. Not in the, the grassroots. The grassroots man in the street back to us. Some girl them blow up. Ready done. I wear some girl them blow.